Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Uh, I've got a couple requests to do an oil change video like I did for the Miata. I, truth be told, I've changed the oil and did a video on my C6 Corvette previously, but I did it in conjunction with changing other fluids and doing a track prep for an HPD weekend. Uh, I'll put a link to that there. So anyway, we're going to show you step by step how to change the oil in a C6 Corvette again, but this time we'll do it differently. I won't use my quick jack. I'll use just, you know, a jack, jack stands, that kind of thing. As always, uh, jack stands are dangerous. Uh, protect yourself, don't die. So I've got my C6 Corvette up on, I've got some two by 10 ramps that I made years and years and years ago that are still working out great. That helps uh, drive up on this, be able to jack up the car from the cross brace that I'll show you and place the jack stands and all that. So it just makes this a little simpler, a little easier to get under the car. That's why I drove up on them. You'll also need motor oil, oil filter, and I believe it's a 15 millimeter to remove the oil drain plug. But if I get that wrong, I'll put that down there. And yeah, I think that covers it. Got to get the vehicle in the air. Got to remove the oil. Oh, you got to have something to catch the oil, the uh, drain pan over there and that I don't have in the footage, but we'll pretend it's right here and I'll say, yeah, you gotta have a drain pan. So that takes care of all that. Eh, we'll get the car up in the air. Under the car here, we have this metal and I called it a cross brace and that wasn't exactly accurate. It's a cradle. This part back here and this are all one piece. You've got the leaf spring here, but this, I <laughs> call it a cross brace because that's what it looks like to me, but it's really a cradle because it's one giant aluminum uh, assembly that the engine kind of sits on. But you can put a two by four, two by six block of wood right here. You could just jack from right here. I like to use a, a block of wood just to make sure I don't gouge up the aluminum cradle. And you just put it there. You put a jack right under it and lift right up. The oil drain plug is back there. We'll see that in a little bit. And just behind it is the oil uh, filter itself. You can put jack stands on this cradle if you want. I do not. There are jack points on the sides of the car, is, and I use hockey pucks, and I put the uh, jack stands there. I'll show you those after we get this car up. Let's get the car up. Between that camera there and my little camera right here, I'll show you these little holes that are under the car. That's uh, the lifting points. If you take a good old fashioned hockey, point, hockey puck, drill a hole in it, put an eye bolt in it, it'll slide up in that hole. You can twist this, it'll kind of lock into place, and this will rest on the jack stand. As always, jack stands will kill you. You're trusting your life to them. Look at them. I've talked about this all the time. Checking the welds, make sure they don't look bad. Checking these feet, making sure this thing isn't all jacked up. And yes, these are Harbor Freight. Been using them for a long time. I'll continue to use them, but I always either take the wheel off, put it under the car, and that's my added safety protection. Or in this case, I'll leave the jack under the car with a little bit of pressure on it. That way, if one of these fails, I'll be okay your life don't die doing an oil change can't say it enough so we got to slide our little wood out of here we'll get our hockey puck stick it up in the hole and yeah twist it in ah All right. What you want to make sure is that hockey puck is centered on that jack stand foot like this. You don't want it off centered. So I'm going to set the other one up as I, after I do that and I lower the car down, I'll lower the car down slowly and verify that the jack stand is straight along with that hockey puck and in the center on both sides. And if you think this is too much effort, 
to make sure your car is on jack stands properly, don't ever put your car on jack stand. Because if you think it's too much effort, then just don't do it. All right, now we can get under the car and uh, drain some oil out. As you can see, I've added wheel chalks uh, right there. I forgot to do that, so my bad. All right, so we're going to remove our drain plug and then our oil filter. I had it wrong. It is a 13 millimeter bolt right here. And just kind of center that on there and lefty loosey. Ah, yeah, lefty loosey. Ah, exactly. And you can always wear gloves for this. I like to. Uh, live dangerously and I just honestly forgot, but I don't know if you can see I'm wearing protective eyewear because random fluid in your eye sucks. Believe me, I've had brain cleaner in my eye and it was farking horrible. So we'll just drain this out and after that finishes draining, we'll remove the oil filter and sometimes they don't come off and that's why I've got my pliers right here. While you're waiting on that, you can take one of your clean rags and clean off your oil filter drain plug. And mine's magnetic, and man, there's nothing on this thing. That is muy excellente. And we'll just set that right there. While the oil is draining, now's a good time to get a little oil, some new oil, and put it on your new oil filter on this gasket right here. Just want to put a dab of it on it and just to kind of condition it up, it's dried out. Then you can take some, just put it on these threads right here, and that's that. And by the time you get that old oil filter off and uh, put this new one, get ready to put the new one on, it'll be ready to go. I don't know if you can see it or not, this old drain plug has a nice little rubber grommet right there. That helps you get a wonderful leak-free seal. I don't know what the torque value on this is. I'll find out and put it in the video. Uh, I'm going to guess it's 30 foot-pounds just off the top of my head. I'm going to go uh, snug with the calibrated elbow. As you can see, our oil's basically drained out. I mean, we can wait like this for a long time and end up with something like a quarter of a cup. So we'll just call that good. Put this back on. Righty tighty, get our 13 millimeter and snug it down. And oh, yep, that click calibrated elbow said good. We'll wipe that off so that way when we add oil and do our leak check, we'll know what is new oil, not old oil. Now it's time to get the oil filter out. Sometimes these are a pain in the you know what to get out. Oh, there we go. It's spawn. We'll let that drain a little bit as we back it off just a little bit more and more will start draining off of it. And what I'm trying to do is just let it kind of, it's full of oil. So when I grab it and move it, it'll drain a lot more. What I'm trying to do is let any residual oil that's sitting on top of it get out. like that. <laughs> and it's a little warm. Uh, all right. I moved the car around a little bit, getting it into position. So it's warm, but not hot. And wipe my oily hands off. Again, should have put gloves on. Just wasn't really thinking about it. After that drains off, we'll have to get up in here and actually look at the oil filter mating surface to make sure that the surface is clean, debris free. I could look on this filter and tell you that the oil, that the gasket that I'm touching is still on it. So I know that's not on there, but I'm going to look up there anyway, just to triple check. You just, you don't want to turn a, a simple job into a mother sucker of a job. 
when all it takes is just a little effort from you. And we'll wipe this up. Oh yeah. Nothing nowhere. All good, all clean. Wipe your hands off pretty good. Now you can get your new oil filter on and don't cross thread it. Just make sure it's going correctly and hand tight is all this requires. You see people put these on with tools all the time. That is not the way to do this. Hand tight. You saw I just pulled this thing off by hand. You saw the rubber gasket I put a uh, oil on to condition it up. This thing does not require a hundred foot pounds of torque to be tight so it doesn't require a tool. I'm a tool putting it in but I digress. All right I'm gonna try to wipe that down. I'll probably skeet a little brake cleaner in here just to make sure I get all the old residual fluid off so that way when I look at it from a leak check standpoint I will know what's I will know most of it's removed. Okay, so on the passenger side of the vehicle, uh, it's not a good place for me to get this in the camera. So I'll uh, get it up. I'll show you a little picture. There's a little thing that looks like it's got a spigot on it with uh, some waves under it. That's the international symbol for oil. You take this off, and ironically, it says Mobile One 5W30 on it, as you can see there. Take my handy dandy fun funnel that I got from my uh, Mecham Auto Auction. A that I went to, the only one I've been to that uh, I went to on my bachelor's party. Thank Bill, bachelor's party. Thanks, Bill and Jason. And the owner's manual calls out for five and a half quarts. We will put five and a half quarts in, start the car, leak check it, and if no leaks, shut the car off. We'll pull it into the garage. It'll be more level. We'll wait about 15 or 20 minutes, check the oil level on the dipstick at that point, and if we need to add more oil, we will. If not, we'll be good. And if you couldn't tell, I used a Mobile One oil filter. I like them. They're very good. Lots of people on the internet like them. I use Mobile One. I will use other oil sometimes. I get a great deal on Mobile One. For those of you that shop at Costco, you can get the six quarts for uh, like $24. When you catch it on sale, you can get the five quart jug at Walmart for $24. Walmart for $24. 5W30, what the factory calls for. Uh, you put in whatever you see fit. And after I add a few quarts, I'll, I'll probably put in two more quarts that I'll make four. I'll just look under the car to make sure I don't see any drips, leaks. No point to uh, keep adding oil if all you're doing is pouring it on the freaking garage floor. And by the end of the week, it should be warm. That's the other reason I'm going ahead and changing the oil now is we'll be ready for the summer. And heck, maybe even a track day or two. <sighs> you know. 2020 wasn't what any of us expected, but it's what we got. You do the best you can, and that's all you can do. That's pretty much life. You take what it throws at you, try to be as positive as you can be, try to find the good that you can find, and keep on keeping on. Four quarts, I'm going to poke my head under the car and look for any oil leaks. Yeah, nothing's falling, coming off, nothing's dripping on the ground. So... So far, so good. This is quart number five. That's five quarts. The reason I know it's five is I have five empty bottles right here. This is the sixth one. There's some marks here. So we'll go to the halfway mark and put the cap on. Man, it's almost like I've done this before. All right. Got a little rag for our funnel. Make sure we don't drip oil all over the freaking car. Put our oil cap back on. That is always imperative. Righty tidy on that one. Spread brake cleaner in my funnel to clean it out. That's what I do is every time I use my funnel when I'm done with it, I, I clean it up, clean it out. That way the next time I have to use it, I don't have to think about cleaning it because it's just clean. I can just do whatever I need to do. All right, now we'll uh, start the car, do a leak check. And we 
have oil pressure. That is fantastic. While the car's running, we'll just look under it. I'll look on the passenger side, driver side. I'll look at the oil filter real good and just make sure no oil's coming out anywhere. You can see there is no oil coming out whatsoever right there. Okay, so we've added five and a half quarts, changed the filter, changed the oil, no leaks. So now we're going to uh, raise the car up, get the jack stands from under it, put the wood blocks back under it, my wood ramps, drive it off the wood ramps, spin it around, put it back in the garage like it belongs, wait about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, let the oil level kind of settle down because the garage is more level than the cockeyed car, and check it then and see where we're at. Okay, so we'll uh, lift the car up in order to get the weight off the jack stands. That way we can remove them. One jack stand, one hockey puck, ramp goes back. And make sure it's straight and kind of centered on the wheel. That way when you back the car up, it won't roll off. Oh yeah. Let our jack come down, our two by four come down. Now what we gotta do is park it level and wait 20 minutes. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. We're going to uh, write down that we did our oil change, our mileage, and yeah, I'm really high speed, low drag. I still use pen and paper and a clipboard, but whatever you use that works for you, I'm not gonna judge, maybe a little bit. But anyway, spreadsheet, whatever. All right, so we'll go in here and uh, just turn the car on, turn down the music because I'm sure I have non-licensed music playing. 41533, man, this is, she's old, like man, it's almost time to trade her in. And the last thing that we'll do her in here is we'll reset the oil light. And by oil light, I mean the oil life remaining. So you hit the trip button until you get to the oil life remaining percentage. Then you press and hold the reset button. And it flashes 100%. I realize I'm an absolute moron for not showing you that on the camera. And my bad. In order to check your oil level, get a rag of some sort. Pull out the dipstick. Wipe it clean. Get it good and dry. Stick it back in. Give it a a few seconds so you can actually, you know, have all the oil wrap around the dipstick, pull the dipstick out, and sometimes on this it's hard to see. Oh yeah, we're just, I mean, we can just barely see the cross hatching on this. So I'm going to call that good. Hopefully that helps you and showed you how to reset the oil light and all that. I did forget the chalks in the beginning and I said 15 millimeter or 13 millimeter, but hey, do your best as you're going through it. If you see something you realize you forgot, just fix it, chain it, fix it, get it right. Thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage. Have a great day.